I'm Renee Chatelaine. I'm the president and CEO of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. This is Solo Travel Talk. Your solo travel advisor is Astrid Clements. St. Petersburg is the artistic heart of Russia. Hello, everyone. I'm producer Catherine. In collaboration with the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge, Astrid Solo Travel Advisor is pleased to announce the inaugural Art Roots Destination Tour, traveling to St. Petersburg, Russia. The tour will take place June 7th through June 13th, 2017, and is sure to be spectacular. On this episode of Solo Travel Talk, Astrid is joined by Renee Chatelaine, President and CEO of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge, to discuss the Art Roots Tour, St. Petersburg. Just a little note, we did record live from the Arts Council offices in downtown Baton Rouge, and it was just a terrible weather day. It was storming, there was lightning, thunder, and just a ton of rain, so you might be able to hear a little bit of that in our recording. Let's join Renee and Astrid and hear all about this upcoming Art Roots tour. Renee, from your perspective, how did the Art Roots come about? At the Arts Council, we want to provide resources to our community. And one of the ways um, that we feel we can help grow our community is by expanded experience, by a global outlook, um, and that involves traveling seeing other places, seeing how people do things, seeing how they live, really looking at enhanced culture and arts in all its forms. And so this was a great way to open up to our entire community an opportunity to travel and see things through a cultural lens. Well, I got involved because I've been in the arts community in some form or fashion for the last 35 years in Baton Rouge. I've probably served on every board. And uh, I met Renee through one one board, I'm sure. Yes, it was the Manship Theater, wasn't it? And I just thought she was fantastic. I said, Baton Rouge is just so blessed to have the qu- the quality and the caliber of uh, an arts administrator like Renee. So I just loved her from the beginning. I thought she was, like I said, very uh, professional and very intelligent. And I guess we just kind of hit it off. So... When I first started Astrid Solo Travel Advisor, I got a lot of uh, good publicity, and I guess that's when Renee realized that I was doing a lot of very interesting things with travel and with solo travel, and something told her to call me and ask me to uh, help them create uh, tours and trips that would focus would be arts focused or cultural you know focused on different cultures and so when she asked me to do it I said I've been doing this all my life I travel when I travel I go to museums I go to theater performances I I I really seek out what makes a culture different and uh, what makes it exciting so this is something that I'm very excited about that you know she reached out to me I'm dying to know why St. Petersburg for this first tour. Well, that's my that's all my you know my idea. There's several reasons why I chose St. Petersburg. First and foremost, it has a magnificent old world culture, and it's still very alive uh, and and practiced on an extremely high artistic level. Uh, I have been to Russia three times. My first time when I went, uh, being an American and being uh, and not knowing anything uh, about the language, how to read it, etc. And just having a certain amount of apprehension going to Russia, I decided the best way for me to approach a trip there would be to hire a tour agency that would give me a VIP guide and a driver at all times. I structured or gave them the list of the things that I wanted to do and also got some of their suggestions. But to make a long story short, is my first trip I met a fabulous VIP guide in St. Petersburg. And she was very professional, very well uh, educated. And uh, so when Renee came to me, and my experience 
with going to St. Petersburg several times, I thought, I'm going to get with my contact in St. Petersburg because I knew they were, they're very, they're top notch. I contacted my now friend and told her that I wanted to put together a very special trip. The reason why I chose to focus on classical dance is in Russia, I mean, the Russian ballerinas are, in my opinion, the best in the world. And their ballet performances are something of just utter passion and perfection. And it's just... I'll never forget the first time that I went to Russia. I was in Moscow for four days, and one of the things I did was go to the Bolshoi Ballet, and uh, I went and saw Esmeralda. And I left there, I was completely, it was like I had chill bumps, and I couldn't believe at how magnificent everything was. I'm a former music major, so I have... A sensitivity to uh, to music and production and I know what it takes to make it really art you can do things and you can have a, a performance but for it to leave you with chill bumps and to leave you like oh my you know this was something so special you know I'm so lucky to have been able to to do this so uh, because my contacts have extremely good contacts in St. Petersburg with the dance community. One of the other women who owned this bespoke VIP tour company used to produce ballet productions all over the world with the St. Petersburg Ballet Company, Uh, okay? So I knew that they could create a very special itinerary focusing on classical dance, specifically ballet. And also, Renee was a ballerina. So I thought this would be something that would be very special to Renee. And uh, it would be something that I really do think would be a really very good first arts route trip. Because as Renee shared, she wants to take like-minded people in in our region who love the arts to travel the world and to see other places do artistic things at a very high level. This really sounds like something that it was easy for you to say yes to. Absolutely. In fact, what a phenomenal opening for Art Roots. And for me, selfishly, right, having my first life been a ballet dancer, um, St. Petersburg is like going to to Mecca, right? Where we're going to see a window into the Kirov School and and the Academy, which is an amazing, amazing um, place. And what is so extraordinary about it is to be able to see its purest form. There there are several ballet techniques, and one is Vaganova technique, and it's the Russian technique that we study as children if you're in classical ballet. And so to be able to go to the actual source where this was developed is really amazing. And then to see the level of performances as, as Astrid spoke of um, with the professional dancers at the Marinsky Theater, it's just gonna be an amazing trip with such particular access to this type of dance and this form. And I know that we also will have exposure to some folk dancing, which which we also studied as ballet dancers growing up. And, and that sort of has fallen by the wayside in America now. And I'd like to, to to celebrate that a bit more, but we learned different character dances because they are part of, when you do a multi-act ballet, they're, they're the people in the village. We're doing the Shardash, we're doing these different folk dances within the ballet performance. So the folk dance is really, really important to our curriculum and it's something that in modern dance, you are seeing less and less of. So to be able to bring a group of people to actually see it really still in such a pure form is such a unique experience. And so all of that together, along with the architecture and the art and everything else that we'll see, um, said this is the perfect recipe for what we wanna do for Art Roots. Renee, from the perspective of the Arts Council, what do you hope attendees will gain from the tour? What I really love about um, the solo traveler is that um, 
you know, what Astra's done in forming this company is that uh, she's allowed for people who want to go, who have particular interests, um, to collectively go on a trip but still maintain some autonomy on the on the journey and be safe and and have access to things and not feel not feel at all you know at risk um and then be able to to celebrate with others who are like-minded at the same time so what's interesting is you know if you take my husband and i um we are both solo travelers we like to go to a particular place maybe for entirely different reasons um, we love to travel together and experience those things, surely. But we see ourselves as very independent people. Um, for that reason, we have some couples on this trip. We have some solo travelers on this trip. And certainly we always want to welcome anyone who's interested because you can have a varied experience even if you come with your family or in you know a group of two or three. Um, you still are able to do some really independent and extraordinary things and at the same time have the collective experience. Definitely, like Renee said, it's it's geared to uh, couples, solos, small groups, but it's people who are um, interested in culture and specifically the Russian culture. If you love ballet, this is a ballet lover's dream trip. I don't think there's been any trip that I've seen, and I have I have been traveling for 40 years i have looked at so many brochures and now that i'm involved with this project i've never seen a tour that was really focused specifically on ballet so i think this is very extraordinary and also i'm quite proud of that the cost of the tour i think is extremely affordable and many times when you're a solo traveler you almost pay uh uh fare the tour and then another 50 percent in what they call a uh, single supplement well my single supplement is only a hundred and fifty dollars more for for a double room and for the whole tour price without airfare and tips and miscellaneous cost it's five thousand five hundred dollars for a week and for a solo, it's $5,650 a week. And this is staying in a five-star Belmont. Well, it's one of the most historic hotels in St. Petersburg. I've stayed there twice. It is fabulous. It's elegant. Every Friday night in their gorgeous Art Deco restaurant that has a small stage and theater in the restaurant, we're going to experience their Tchaikovsky night. Tchaikovsky night is just uh, a St. Petersburg tradition. And what you will experience is it's an evening of all of Tchaikovsky's magnificent music, but you'll hear it in many forms, whether it's from a string quartet or a pianist or an opera singer. And what I'll never forget the first time that I was there, my last dinner at the hotel, I wanted to go to their caviar bar, which the caviar bar is very famous also in St. Petersburg. Well, I went up there and it was it was closed that evening. And so the maitre d' of uh, the La Roba rest, restaurant asked me if I wanted to come in and, and dine there. And I said, well, am I dressed okay? And he said, no, you'll be fine. He said, I'll set you up a table for one. I'll put a candelabra on the table. And you're just going to really enjoy yourself. So I went in. And I, st- I was looking at the, at the people in the restaurant and, and the whole thing. And I just was... I was here again, taken aback. Here I was in this gorgeous setting with this gorgeous music in all different forms. And then all of a sudden, here comes two ballerinas and they do a pas de deux. And I went, I have never seen anything like this in the world. And I have been to many beautiful hotels and many beautiful things. But to be so refined, that's what really the whole evening was. It was so refined in terms of the setting, the food, the music, the performances. So that's one of the things that we'll we'll be experiencing on the tour. So it's for 
solos, for groups, for ballet lovers, and for anybody who really wants to experience a culture that is exotic. And there, the level of passion and dedication to the arts there, it, it, the, what you will see there and feel there in terms of the arts, I don't think there's anywhere in the world that is any better. St. Petersburg is truly the cultural capital of Russia. So the architecture is magnificent. We are going to be going to, I think there's six or seven palaces, five that are imperial palaces and two that are private palaces. And I've been to all of them, I think, except two. And these palaces, I mean, Catherine's palace is, is, it rivals Versailles. It's magnificent. And uh, Peter Hoff is also uh, rivals uh, uh, Versailles. Uh, it, the architecture is out of this world, and there's so many aspects to it. It's got a real Oriental uh, kind of influence in it, a Middle Eastern influence a southern european mediterranean it's like a clash of all of these different ethnic groups that has surfaced in their architecture so the architecture is just just so beautiful because some of it is so fantasy like but it it fits there you know i mean it's part of how passionate these people are when you go there and you get to know them you will understand why the onion domes and all of these different things that they created it just goes with the the place so we'll get to see a lot of that we'll also go to the spill blood uh orthodox church and peter paul uh fortress we're going to go to several museums, the Russian Museum. We'll go to the Hermitage or the Hermitage. People call it, pronounce it all kinds of different ways. But this museum, is it rivals the Louvre. It truly is fabulous. And we're going to get a VIP access to the Diamond Collection, which is, uh, you know, you can't just, you, you have to have somebody who can get you into that. So we'll, we'll be doing that. And so it's going to be a sprinkling of performances in the evening. Some uh, during the day will go to, uh, like she said, the Vaganova Ballet School. We're going to go to Matilda Kazajinsky. I, mean, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she was one of the most famous prima, donna, uh, prima ballerinas in Russian uh, ballet history. We'll go to her palace. We're going to go to... Uh, a museum that uh, it's a theatrical museum but it will show the whole history of Russian ballet and how it started and and all the different aspects of it whether it's the costuming or uh, the creation of the roles and the prima ballerinas etc so and we're even going to have a prima ballerina dine with us at one of the oh the restaurants we're going to go to that's another thing this is this tour is all five star i'm telling you from the things that we're going to see from the very special touches that uh have been worked into this trip to uh you know the ballet performances etc but this this one night we're going to be uh a prima ballerina i don't know who she is yet is going to join our group for dinner at this restaurant called Re Repa. And this is, it is so cool. I've go Googled it and it's a modern restaurant with all kinds of Russian uh, swans. And I mean, this is one of the, the places to go to. Uh, one of the, the restaurants. I think we're going to hit every the restaurant <laughs> on this tour. We're going to go to Tsar restaurant. We're going to go to the Vodka Room, which is in a 15th century monastery. And it's also uh, a museum. It's ethnic Russian cooking. We're going to go. Our farewell dinner is in the Stroganov Palace in the Ru Russian Empire restaurant. We're going to go to several ethnic restaurants that uh, one Georgian, one Azerbaijani, uh, just it, it, 
every place that I think that they have put on this tour, I think is fabulous. And I've been to probably not, not probably 60%. So it's even going to be new to me. Well, you know, in thinking about the trip, and especially the trip to St. Petersburg, I wanted to make the point that when Peter the Great came into power, one of the things that he did, because he wanted to westernize Russia, was that he disguised himself as, as a European, as a common European, and walked amongst the cultural happenings all over Europe, and then came back and brought the best of what he saw back to what is now St. Petersburg. And, and built the city that we're going to see. And that, in essence, is what Art Roots is. And so that's what we're building on, is that people go and they walk the walk of, of the Russians and they see the best, the very, very best that is offered there. And they take a piece of that back with them. And so Baton Rouge gets enhanced and we will maybe not see it in the next day, but we'll definitely see it the next day in conversation in an enhanced appreciation for the ballet that we have here, maybe if they did not buy tickets before, they will now buy tickets because they'll be interested and informed about what ballet and what dance has to offer. Maybe if the symphony performs A Night of Tchaikovsky, they will buy a ticket and they will patronize the arts here because it is an informed audience member that will now go to these events. And these people that are traveling with us have interest already, but it, it is a way to build on who we are here and if we take a cue from Peter the Great right that is essentially how he began and so it's a really appropriate place to start I have a couple of of reasons why I think you know this trip is going to be so good or it's so special and what it it brings to our community first of all it's very hard to get real access into a lot of things in Russia for various reasons and typically when somebody travels there they only go to St. Petersburg for a day or two because they're with a a riverboat cruise and they're just shuffled into a couple of key places this trip is so special because we're going to get to spend a week and really absorb or be introduced to the magnificence of this culture and how uh, artistically uh, superior and fantastic the Russians really are and how different it is and exotic and passionate and just uh, it just it does give you chill bumps so that's one thing is this is going to be long enough and we're going to drill deep enough and focus on a particular art form that I think is very special then secondly as Renee said, we're taking like-minded people from Baton Rouge and our area on this trip. And what some of our goal is, is to create what I call a, like a culture club or a, a group of people that love culture, that love the arts, that want to experience it in different places in the world and come back and, and kind of be a core group to continue stimulating open-mindedness in the arts, more of the arts, and just really building more of a culturally diverse community. And then I guess the last thing is, I want everybody to have a great time. (laughs) And I think this is gonna be a really fun trip. I love to do things on a first class level, and I think it's very affordable. So, I'm just so excited about the trip. In fact, I already have another group that wants to do it next year. (laughs) Where can people learn more and register for the Art Roots Tour? They can get in touch with us at uh, on our website, which is artsbr.org, and they just need to search Art Roots, and that's R O U T E S. Or you can call us at 225-344-8558, and we'll be happy to help you either way. Um, And, you know, the other great thing that comes out of this kind of a trip is that like-minded people who may not have known each other before will now know each other. So it's a great way to connect people in the community to each other who didn't know they had similar interests. And so that's really great, too. And, And, you know, bringing a group from America to and I, I know I'll say this and I probably I'll have a, a little bit of a pushback from some people who are listening 
but to go to different countries and to bring you know Americans that are truly interested in your arts the the people really uh they feel so good, and especially right now with Russia and all of the things that we hear in the news. And I'm one of these people that, you know, politics is politics, but travel and connecting with people, understanding other cultures, that's, that's life. You know, the political situation, there's nothing anybody can do too much about that. So... Uh, I've been to Russia, uh, like I said, three times. I know it's safe if you do it correctly. So I'm very excited about being able to offer uh, my city and anybody else this opportunity to, to, to learn and to be enriched. Renee, I know a lot of times Astrid really talks about how travel can really change us and the arts can change us. So I'm wondering, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I definitely think that um, if I use my own life example, that I'm from North Baton Rouge. And because I was a, you know, a wiggly kid, I got put in a dance class at a Breck Park in North Baton Rouge. And that, in essence, changed my life. Yes, I did have a short career as a ballet dancer. And I I am such a fan and love it. But um, more than that, my world became exponentially bigger. And I think that what travel does and what art does in combination, they complement each other in expanding our worlds and creating better understandings. If we talk about politics, you know, simply going and seeing other people live their lives. And, you know, that's the beginning of making connections that are positive and peacemaking. And so art and travel together and respect for history and culture and the knowledge of that makes our present and future lives better. Travel has the power to change us. Art has the power to change us. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, if you are interested in the Art Roots St. Petersburg tour, you can do one of two things. You can contact Astrid at astrid at astridtravel.com by email or go to artsbr.org. That's artsbr.org and search Art Roots and find out all the registration information there. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and really find it any of the finer places that podcasts can be found. If you like what you're hearing, please tell somebody you know who you think might be interested in solo travel talk. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to talking with you next week on Solo Travel Talk. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Solo Travel Talk. Follow Astrid on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. To learn more about Astrid or her solo travel advisors, visit her website, astridtravel.com.